Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Hey, grab yourself a cup of tea and join me today. It's just a delight for me to come into your home or wherever you are, wherever you see this program. I know you can walk around and watch it on your phone. That just blows my mind. But however you are present with us, I appreciate that and hope that if this is your first time, it won't be the last time. My name is Arthlane Rippey and we like to deal with things that affect the home. So that being the measuring stick, we'll never, ever, ever run out of things to talk about. That's for sure. And one thing that affects our homes, politics, right? I've got to admit I am a political junkie. I just enjoy reading it, knowing about it, getting mad, you know, and all this. Well, we've got a wonderful politician with us today, former politician. Her name is Jennifer Carroll, and she has served in the House of Representatives in the state of Florida, but she has also been the uh, Lieutenant Governor of the state of Florida. So I am honored uh, to have her today, and she has a new book out we will be talking about and uh, most interesting life. I'll tell you, this is the truth. If I just started reading the list of awards and accolades she has received through the years, it would take up a good portion of the program. So uh, when you meet her, you will, you will know what I'm talking about. I'm just so glad to welcome her here today. And I'm going to join Stephanie, who's fussing a little bit because we're doing stuffed cabbage rolls which I've never made, but I've enjoyed, you know, in German restaurants and that kind of thing. But she declares that this recipe is not as good as the one her Polish grandmother did. So uh, we will get her full opinion of that after I offer you another book on money. And you say, well, Arthur, you offer us quite a variety of books on money. You've got that right. I'm worried about you. I'm concerned. I read horror stories in the newspaper <coughs> about people in their 50s and 60s, not the least bit ready for retirement. And you know, the Bible tells us so specifically how to deal with money. And this book is called God's Thrifty Extravagance, and it has all the scriptures in it about money, just right in this small book. And I've never ever offered a book with, well, let's just say, so, so cheap. We're offering in this book, God's thrifty extravagance for only a $10 gift to the program, plus the shipping and handling. We'll be glad to get it to you. And the information is on your screen. 1-800-229-0059 is that credit card number. And then the address, if you like to contact us that way, that's great. Uh, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we will get it right out to you. And I've joined Stephanie over here. So you have not been talking nice about this. I just don't know. I mean, I'm, it, it's probably very good. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> oh, this is what I want to challenge you to. And she, do we need to get this going? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's get it this going. This is a pound of hamburger. <clears throat> this is a cup of cooked rice. Mm -hmm. We have some onion, some salt, some pepper, and I'm going to put two tablespoons of do you want this in there? tomato soup. Everything? Sure. Yes. Uh, the reason we want to get it going is so that you can see exactly how we put it together. That's yes. two tablespoons of... Tomatoes. She too. said never, never. I have tomato never soup. heard of this. But this is what I want. Yes, okay. This Next is what... week. Okay. Let's do yours. Okay. Okay. Sure. And yours came from? My grandmother. Mm. Yes. That's the best kind. So it's better. That's the no. best kind. So I'm just going to mix this <clears throat> all together. We, I took some cabbage leaves earlier. You just kind of wilt them, right? Yeah, and I boiled them for just... Now, the recipe says to cut the cabbage leaves off and boil them. I put the whole cabbage head in there because then when you that's a good idea. when you take them off, you don't rip just, the cabbage yeah. leaves. Yeah, so that's what Brilliant. I Brilliant. You can put that egg in here, too, if you want. And, uh, okay, I got some news for you. Okay. <clears throat> Stephanie has challenged me <clears throat> to have all my Christmas shopping done by the second week of November. Yes. Correct? Done and wrapped. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> last weekend, I went through a closet I have where I buy a gift once in a while, stick mm -hmm. it in there. You had a gift closet and you didn't even know it. I didn't know even it. know it. <clears throat> so I made my list, 25 people on my list. Mm -hmm. But remember, I got eight great grandchildren and then yes. I've got grandchildren yes. and they've got wives and, and how husbands. how helpful is the list? Oh, it's wonderful. Yes. I wrapped six gifts last weekend. How good does that feel? I mean, it was such a gift 
such a sense of accomplishment. Yes, yes. Saturday morning, last Saturday morning, I got up, I wrapped probably. Did you really? Mm, 12 gifts. Yeah. Okay. Started putting baskets. Okay, so there's all my, my insides. I had boiled the cabbage leaves earlier. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get a good shot of this. We have eight cabbage leaves, so mm -hmm. I'm going to do this in half, and then we'll know we need to get four out of each one. Uh, it's such a brilliant idea to wilt those in the head. Yes. because then Did your Polish grandmother teach you that? Yes. Now, here's another thing I'm discovering, okay? Mm -hmm. Because we're we're using a pound that uh -huh. it calls for a pound. <laughs> I make gargantuan size everything. I do. I don't know what my problem is, but I do because I use five pounds of hamburger to do cabbage to rolls. To do cabbage rolls, yes. So these are babies Baby. compared to my. So you just put it right in here, okay? Uh -huh. And you just start rolling and you tuck. How cute! Okay. Now the directions say put a toothpick in them or put a string in them, you don't need to. You just tuck and put no. the tucked part underneath. Okay? So let's do another one. So we have it here. But you said that you almost acted like uh, tomato soup was a sin. Oh, I just... You don't use tomato soup. No, I use tomato sauce and peeled diced tomato, you know, out of the can. Oh, these are lovely. Mm -hmm. And they're babies. So I'm going to do eight of these and I'm going to put them in the pan. And then I'm going to finish covering them with the tomato soup, okay? Uh -huh. And then I'm going to cut up some of the um, extra cabbage here uh -huh. to put over the top. Give it more flavor. Mm -hmm. Put a little water in there, and then you Excuse just me. put it on the, um, cover it and put it on the stove for about 40 minutes. So it's, it's nothing you bake. I mentioned that I had uh, had these in German restaurants. I love to go to a German uh -huh. restaurant. Now, these are nice size, though. They are small, yes. I think maybe you should have some I think I'm seeing what some of my problems are. Because <laughs> I'm not kidding. I use five pounds of, of hamburger plus the rice and everything. I can save you some money here. And I, I need, well, I, I think need to you lose need weight a psychologist why, to because, see, because why does everything have to be so big? Because last week we made some pumpkin spice cookies, cookies and she that made were these ginormous. huge and they just, they just uh, I'm starting to see up. what my problem is. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to get a bite of this. Yes. And so not just drip it on my and jacket. Roll and tuck, roll and tuck. Just like that. Yeah, I, I wish it had more gravy like. Yeah. Yeah, mine's very saucy. Very flavorful. Yeah. You might be surprised. What I don't a know. great idea. Now, your kids might. It's super easy, too. Might I not mean, like cabbage, but cabbage they rolls, would like what's in there. Cabbage rolls seem like they're a lot of work, and they're really. They're not. not. What do you think? Mmm! <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't admit it for anything in the world because we're not going to put Grandma down. But yours are better, right? If you've never had cabbage rolls, they're okay. <laughs> yummy. No? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I promise you next next week uh, we will we'll we do, will mine. do yours. Yes. Yeah. And I, I really, but they, to me, these are good, but I've never made them, so <laughs> what you don't know won't hurt you, they say. Right, that's our saying. Ignorance is bliss sometimes. <laughs> but we do try to give you recipes, you know, to really stretch your food budget. It's getting ridiculous yes, out there. Yes. I feel so badly yes. for people, you know, with working hard, two jobs, and, and they've got several of, children. This is one of those ones you can make extra, mm -hmm. and I always freeze them. Do you? And then I have dinner already made for another night. I just take them mm -hmm. out. Heat them up, and they're done. Well, girl, you've taught us a lot. All right. If you want this recipe, you can email us. That's coming up. Send it right out to you. If you don't have a computer, write to us. No charge. We're glad, so glad to get it to you. And I highly recommend these. That's just my opinion. So we will see you next week. The, <laughs> the, the cook-off yes. of the cabbage. Yes. Rolls. All right. Stay with me. You're going to meet a very, very interesting lady and you're going to be interested in what she has to say, so stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write to the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org.
right, I want you to meet uh, Jennifer Carroll, and this book is quite new. How many months has it been out? August 27th, my birthday is when it came out. Oh, that's, that's not very <laughs> long ago at all. Okay. And um, it's an Amazon bestseller. It is. And all. And um, so you'll find out how you can get it in just a couple minutes. Mm -hmm. We'll put all that information on the screen. But I certainly want to welcome you, and what an interesting life you have had. Do you ever, do you ever sit back and think, whoa? <laughs> well, now I have, <laughs> since writing the book. The book. Yeah. yeah. But while I was engrossed in doing all the things that God has blessed me to do, I didn't think that it was a lot. Mm -hmm. But he, he makes it happen. He, he's put us here for a reason, mm -hmm. and the reason is to do his works. So when you look back, if you are truly mm -hmm. uh, doing the things that God has put mm -hmm. you here to do, when you look back on your life, everyone will have a book that they can write. Well, yours is extraordinary. Um, you are uh, an immigrant from Trinidad, and that was uh, interesting to me because uh, in your book you describe how the little kids would see an airplane and say, take me to America, <laughs> take me to America. Um, that's such a compliment. To our, to our nation mm -hmm. um, because that general idea of that's where that's where the dream is mm -hmm. it's America do you think that's still true I believe it's still true around the world certainly around the world uh, and we can see particularly with people trying to cross our borders illegally coming into this country if it was so great where they were they won't try yeah. to be breaking our <laughs> laws to get into this country but we are a nation of laws and should abide by that and anyone who comes in here need to follow our rules of this country because we can't take on everyone mm -hmm. and care for everyone but we do have an obligation to follow the law and do what's right but the American dream is still alive and well and we have to make sure that we have good citizens that take part in the political process so that it will continue and grow and prosper for future generations. Is there anything I can vote for you for? <laughs> Um, I keep hearing that a lot. <laughs> oh, I, I let me tell you, I wouldn't rule it out because you've been in it. You're lieutenant governor of Florida for several years, and um, you, you know when you see everything and all. But we need people like you <clears throat> uh, to go in and fight the battle because there are some real battles that need to be fought. Well, you saw I fought a lot <laughs> while I was yes, in I government. Did. I read the book. Yeah, but yeah, it's a good read when you get there. And, and people ask me about the title. Why did you name it that? I says, you know, when you get there, it may not be what you thought it was going to be. When that you get so there, true. take time and enjoy the fruits of your labor and your accomplishment. When you get there, create a pathway for others so they can have an easier road than you had. And most importantly, when you get there, take time to give God thanks for Amen. helping you to get to that point. So that was the, the title of the book, When You Get There. But going back to your question with regards to in government, we do need good people to step up and run. But most importantly, not after you run and get elected, but remain humble in the process. You are there for a specific purpose. When you ran for office, all these candidates that come and say, I want to work for you, I want to make yeah, sure everything yeah. is done. I'm right. your servant. Yeah. <laughs> and then they get in there and they forget mm -hmm. who they're serving. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things when I got into office, when I was in the Florida House of Representatives, I asked God to give me and keep that humility within me so that I never forget why I am there. If I say I want to have a, a, a servant's heart, then let me exude that every day. And at the time that that is is not happening with me I wanted God to smack me upside the head <laughs> because I truly embraced my role and took it as an honor for what people had elected me to do it is not only honor. that but also as lieutenant governor yes uh, let's go ahead and put up uh, the information on Jennifer uh, you can uh, learn more about her from her website and all but also uh, you can get the book through the website I want to backtrack just a little bit your uh, your birth mother decided to come to America without you and so you were you legally adopted I was legally adopted by the parents who raised me which was my great aunt and uncle uh -huh. they were older people and I was their only child so mm -hmm. they were very coveted <laughs> and very afraid to mm -hmm. let me go and so but I was very mindful and respectful of them and held them very dear to me and wanted to do the best that I can be for them to show them my gratitude mm -hmm. and that comes uh, that comes strong in the book um, and they were good parents. Yes. I mean, 
They were the she best. She had curfew. She <laughs> had homework. She had to clean the house. She, this, this abuse. I couldn't fall asleep in church <laughs> <laughs> every Sunday. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, but it was uh, great. So were you still a teenager when you went in the military? I was. I was 19 years old. I served 20 years in a, in a military. I joined as an E1. And I, moved, I was a jet mechanic when I was enlisted, moved up through the ranks to retire after 20 years as an aviation maintenance officer. And back in, uh, during the late 70s when I joined the military, it was not open, that field of aviation maintenance was not open to women. So it's very... It uh, would never <laughs> enter my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but it, the challenges, I talk about this in a book, the challenges that I experienced there, being a woman and being a black woman as well in the environment where I was ac ac accelerating in rank, which was not liked by my male counterparts. And throughout my mm -hmm. time in the military, I felt a need to create that pathway for others to come, other women to come behind me and so that they didn't experience some of the things that I went through at the time coming into the military. Do you think that it's still the same way for females in the military? I don't believe so. In some areas maybe because they just open up the submariners to women but at the time I retired in the late 90s they just started allowing females to go on board ships and that was a challenge in itself but I think more and more the military understands that the men cannot do it all mm -hmm. and without downsizing and needing to have an end strength and a force that is properly trained equipped and ready to handle the task that we do need women in the fold as well. So I, I believe women are embraced more so now. Yeah, and you you endured some rudeness. Yes. Uh, come on, guys. <laughs> this is just But you know, not. in the workplace, even in the civilian workplace, that a type of uh, mentality still exists. Particularly, I talk about in the book with the challenges I had with a good old boy system in politics, mm -hmm. that still exists. Because and you were a black Republican woman? Because I was a woman first, first? and then being black, and in some areas, because I'm, I'm a Republican woman, so I get a, th a three whammy across <laughs> three the brow. Three yes. out. <laughs> but you know, with the grace of God, uh -huh. I hoped that the times that I was able to show and shine the light on others to create a, a, a light for them to have a mm -hmm. pathway so that they can achieve and accomplish accomplish things that God has placed me there for a reason. We're all not going to have an easy life. Jesus didn't have an easy <laughs> life. Joseph didn't have, have any. Joseph was was lied on and sent to jail for 13 years or something he didn't, didn't do, but do. he stayed in grace. He stayed with his faith. Jesus was put in prison. And he was crucified to save us from our sins. He didn't do anything wrong. So if Jesus can endure that pain and that suffering, who are we as mortal men to not mm -hmm. uh, have to go through these pains and suffering? But God doesn't do it to us for purpose. He does it so that he can either remind us who's mm -hmm. in control or craft us and mold us into what he has created us to be. Boy, that, that is just a wonderful example because we live in a very whiny time. Yes. Uh, everything is emotional and how do you feel and blah, blah, blah. and um, the, the, those that really get things done are not whiners. There was enough coming your way for you to just have a career whining. <laughs> that would have been uh, what you could do, but um, you really did overcome a lot that the rest of us, you know, sat back and look at this American history unfolding with women uh, in military and more and more like that. Give us a little civics lesson on uh, Lieutenant Governor, which you were with uh, the president the present governor of Florida, Rick Scott. You were his um, lieutenant governor. Um, is that like a vice president? Correct. So it's, if something happened to him, that person steps in. Correct. And that was not pleasing to the good old boys at all. <laughs> if, if that, if that, because I wasn't, my I wasn't the chosen one. I wasn't one of the establishment. Mm -hmm. And heaven forbid something had happened to the governor mm -hmm. or if I had stayed with him to run a second term that maybe I chose to run for governor, that would upset their whole apple cart mm -hmm. of all the niceties oh, yeah. and the power that they have. It would go out the window because they know I wouldn't play mm -hmm. that game. So therefore, I had to be ousted somehow. But you talk about, you know, when you go through these difficult times, and the best thing that you can do is just turn it over to God. Mm -hmm. Without his strength and my faith in him, I would have crumbled. Oh, yeah. And one of the reasons that I wrote the book. Lived angry, too. Exactly, and, and very bitter. And that would not have been good for myself and mm -hmm. my family. But I've known people that have been through less than I have, that have committed suicide or turned to mm -hmm. drugs and alcohol or been very destructive with their families. And I wrote the book to be a motivator, uh, something that's gonna motivate, inspire, and encourage people that the, the bad news is never the final chapter. 
Yeah, and then to meet you in person, <laughs> uh, everything rings true oh, in this book. And if you just tuned in, I'm talking to Jennifer Carroll. Uh, this is a rather new book. She, she was the Lieutenant Governor of the state of Florida. And the information is on the screen. Uh, you can go through Amazon and I'm sure Barnes & Noble and all those Correct. other places to get this. It's just a compelling life. And when I mentioned at the top of the program that I could spend the whole program just about with your awards, um, I'm all over the place in this, <laughs> this interview. <laughs> but that's good. That will give entice her to go read the book. Because <laughs> you have a husband. We, I do. And, and three children. And one of your boys is? Nolan Carroll, number 23. He's a cornerback with the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, my. He used to be with the Miami Dolphins, and he went out as a free agent. And, and he's, he's, the, he's the epitome of uh, the greatest kid that you actually all three of our children but he has remained humble you would never know you can speak stay with him for a whole year and never know that he's an NFL player he stayed yeah. very humble ve very meek and mild he doesn't live lavishly he has his Bible studies he, he honors God every day says his prayers honors his parents and we are so blessed to know that the teachings that my husband and I we've been my husband and I've been married for over 30 years 31 years to be mm -hmm. exact and uh, you you, you train a child up and you hope that when they go away that mm -hmm. the training that they have it will stick with them mm -hmm. and so far we are truly blessed that all three of our children have remained how can, in how the can faith. we put a, a spotlight on him because the poor NFL has not <laughs> had a good year <laughs> as far as uh, their reputation That's what I so say forth. they need uh, some holy water just <laughs> <to them>. <laughs> <laughs> if that would work um, so you know I'm all like I said I'm all over the map I've, I've got you in the governor before you know talked about your children and all which uh, you I usually try to stay in a, um, a bit of a, a chronological order. Mm -hmm. So um, you talk about in the um, in running for office, office about a whisper campaign. Yes. What is that? Well, a whisper campaign occurs when it's coming from your camp outside to others to badmouth you or to tear you down. And you don't oh, really? know. You don't <laughs> know where the ja the daggers are coming from. You're assuming that everyone that's around you is, you know, saying that they they like you and, and they're working with you. But meanwhile, they have a different agenda. So, so they they could be right in your absolutely inner and, circle. And that happened to me. That happened to me. Where in our inner circle was putting out bad information to the press and the press. They're not going to do their homework. Mm -hmm. They just love a sensational story. And the bad thing about a person in politics, anyone can say anything. The mm -hmm. press can print it. And there is no accountability whatsoever. Unfortunately, in, some, in this country, that's how it is. In other countries, you cannot say something that's onerous and untrue about a politician and get away with it. But it, it's allowed here. Because once you're a public servant, it's very difficult to sue for defamation. This, you have to go to the, yeah, if the you're moon. Public, yeah. If you're a public official, you're a good uh, punching bag. <clears throat> so therefore, people can say whatever they want, put it out. But if I'm a private citizen, like Sarah Palin, when she came out of office, all those negatives that people were saying that were untrue against her went away. Because they know as, as a private citizen, you can sue for defamation when someone makes a, an a unfactual uh, statement about you. But in politics, as a politician, all bets are off. And you know, some of these, quote, whisper campaigns are so ridiculous it that I, I look at them on TV and think, do you think we just fell off the turnip truck? But unfortunately, you have a group of people out there that thrive on these sensational stories. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't have God truly in their mm -hmm. heart to look through the nonsense and say, this doesn't sound right. This, does, this is not the person that I know. I want to find out more information myself. They'll gravitate to that because their lives may be so messed up or they want to see someone else doing worse mm -hmm. that they'll gravitate to it. And it just takes on a life of its own, particularly with the social media and I guard children particularly kids that I mentor and I volunteer in a lot of community service particularly with our children to share with them stay away from social media mm -hmm. if you have to say something think if you have to say something negative mm -hmm. think ten times before you even say uh -huh. it you know, don't just you say cut, cut, <laughs> count to three but and <laughs> count to ten yeah. because it's so easy to to spool that hate mm -hmm. and it's unfounded many of the things that people read about other people on social media is is not the truth 
truth, but when it takes a life of its own and it grows and other people comment from that, it becomes the truth. And once it's there, you cannot take it down. So a lot of our youngsters, they go on Facebook and Instagram and they yeah. post all of these things yeah. and it will come back to bite them in the butt. When it comes to getting a job or applying for security clearances or anything like that, if they, their, their job takes them in that path, mm -hmm. they will regret the mm -hmm. things that they do now in their young life. We're running out of time so uh, quickly, but I do want to touch on this, how hard when you were a representative, you worked and worked with others to get a bill through. Mm -hmm. You talked about them holding a bill hostage. Yes. And you work and work and you work with people and you finally get it through mm -hmm. and then the governor vetoes it. Yes. Uh, I appreciate our three branches of government. Mm -hmm. I, I truly do. But the do they ever just look at a bill and say this is good for the people or this is not good for the people? Well, when you have the lobbyists and a special interest that has an ear of the governor and the funding for that governor at the time, then that drives more than if it's good public policy or not, unfortunately. And you know, a lot of times people will try to take money out of politics, but it's never going to go out because you always have the back door of some wheeling and dealings that's going on. Yeah, and you know, the you say the problem is <clears throat> all of this was put together by godly men, yes. men of high moral character yes. and integrity. And I think it was Thomas Jefferson who said, this system only works with religious moral people. Absolutely. And that's, therefore, we cannot take God out of our schools. We cannot take God. We should not take God out of our government. We should not take God out of our mm -hmm. lives, period. Without that solid foundation and belief in Him and that humility that comes with it, we would be crumbling if we didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it is so critical that we keep Him in our lives across the board. Girl, I'll be your campaign manager. <laughs> <laughs> I welcome it. <laughs> Did you just tune in, friends? I'm talking to Jennifer Carroll. She was our lieutenant governor for the state of Florida. And I notice every chapter starts with a scripture. Yes. And I've just said it over and over, what a life she has had. You would have to read the book to, to understand anything I'm saying. But with the scripture in front of every chapter, is that basically what sustained you through, it was just uh, turbulence, yes. just life turbulence. Absolutely. And without, again, the scriptures to guide you and be that formation to get you back on track, you're going to lose your way. And that's why I thought it was very critical for me to put that in there and put some passages in the book as well to encourage and elevate others so they can have a fru fruitful life for what God has created them to be. I've got about 15 seconds. One more thing I want to say that she really shocked some lobbyists who, uh, who had been donors to your campaign mm -hmm. and they couldn't control her vote after she got in. That is so good. Congratulations. <laughs> We're out of time, but join me next time, friend, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN programs and then on homekeepers.